after we've kind of evaluated our testing method, we need to do our experiment and data. Now, six and seven are actually, they're kind of really tightly related because in order to figure out your testing method, you really need to have done the experiment if, we're, if we have done numerical data uh, to be able to determine if we have equal standard deviations or not. So these two have kind of like meshed into really one. Uh, and once again, basically all of our problems that we're doing, we have these already established. Um, and we may, with an activity, be able to, to do, actually establish an experiment and actually go and collect our own data. Then once we get down to eight, we need to do our test statistic and our p-value. So when we, basically when we get this, we're trying to figure out like how many standard deviations away from, from the mean we are, like if we're getting a t-statistic, a t uh, we're also going to introduce, there's a new test statistic that we use for like our proportions. Uh, we can use chi-squared. Um, but essentially we need to just get the test statistic and then get the p-value. Nice thing about the p-value is it still is like, what would be like, if the null hypothesis is true, how likely would it be for us to see the results that we saw? And if they're too extreme, you know, if, they, if this p-value is less than alpha, we get to reject the null hypothesis. So it's still the same thing about rejecting. So uh, let's go and look at kind of our test statistics and what we might be seeing. So when we are dealing with our means, So we'll have dealing with the means and dealing with our proportions. So this is kind of our test statistics. All right, so if we're dealing with our means, we're basically going to be dealing with a T-score. And with our proportions, uh, we're going to need to know uh, our, it's going to be chi-squared. So it looks like this, chi-squared. It is also possible to do it uh, with a z-score. They kick out the same p-value. They're doing, they're doing the, the same thing in order to get like, the calculations wind up giving you the exact same p-value. It's just a slightly different method. And we'll be using the, the chi-squared method, but sometimes you also see with the proportions, like we did with our one sample proportions, uh, a z-test. Anyhow, when we do our t, we, because we're going to be wanting to report this in like our APA format, uh, we also are going to want to know our degrees of freedom. And we also, and then we also need to like know our p-value. So when we finally are reporting in our APA format for our means, we are going to be doing something like this, where it says T, and then our degrees of freedom, we put in like whatever our calculated degrees of freedom are. It's not as easy as just uh, this N minus one as it was with our original um, one sample hypothesis testing. It's more complicated, but the software will take it for you. Uh, we'll handle it for you. So we'll put in just our degrees of freedom. And then we put in the actual value of our test statistic. And then we also need to just report our p-value saying p equals and then whatever the p-value was. So that's how we deal it with deal with it with the means. With our chi squared, we need a couple more pieces. Uh, so the degrees of freedom as the number of groups minus one. But let's just put up we'll just put up degrees of freedom. We're going to need to know the sample size, and we put it as our n. And we also need our p value. And so as we do this. How we report for our proportions, we'll have it as chi squared, and then we need to do uh, it's our first number, which is the degrees of freedom, and then we need to know the n, and then we can say that equals whatever our chi squared, our test statistic, 
And then we still do the same thing with our p-value. And that's how we kind of report our test statistic on our, on our p-value in our correct format. And then still, if, if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null, the null hypothesis. And then we wind up with our how we handle our conclusions. And I'm going to hold off on the conclusions until our next video because it's going to take me a little while to get through how we do our conclusions for our means and our proportions.